Well, all right, welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we're gonna be going over some different 147, 150 grain, nine millimeter ammunition and find out which ones shoot the softest or have the best feel for competition. All right, so first up, what we have here, let's just go over the ammunition. We've got Parabellum Research. This stuff you can get from Green Country Ammunition. It's 147 gram TMJ ammo at 925 feet per second. We're gonna test this also on the chronograph. Each one of these are gonna get a chronograph reading. And then I have Defender. This is not their um, competition series. However, it is their 147 grain before they came out and developed the competition series. So we'll check that out. And then we have Winchester Super Suppressed Ammunition. Subsonic for suppressors at, it says 990 feet per second. And then we have 147 grain standard Federal American Eagle ammunition. And then we've got the official ammunition of the USPSA, the 150 grain Syntec ammunition from Federal. So let's give all of these a chance to see which one shoots the softest and it feels the best on recoil. Okay, we're gonna load up, the gun's empty. We're gonna load up one mag, because I have five mags. I've got five kinds of ammo here, one mag per ammo. Ooh, look at this uh, Winchester suppressor, by the way. I've noticed some of these has like rust on there and I bought these maybe two months ago. So I don't understand how they can already have some rust on the primers of the on the bottom here. I'm sure they'll be fine, but I guess be aware of that. Make sure your storage conditions are good and um, inspect the Winchester suppressor 147 grain ammunition before you buy it, I guess. I don't know if there's a date code on here to kind of tell you when it was produced right here maybe, but it doesn't really tell me anything. So be on the lookout for that. And by the way, we'll do 10 rounds of each ammunition through the chronograph. And at the same time, hopefully get some Mantis X10 recoil analysis readings for you. Hopefully I can have two applications open at the same time recording data. If not, then we're just gonna have to do 10 rounds chronograph, 10 rounds Mantis. And what we're using today is the P320 X5 here that I use for competition. So there's no other better gun than to try this test with the gun that I plan to use this ammunition for. So I'm going to do a one shot test here through the chronograph and see if it picks it up on the recoil meter. Let's see if it, I get both things to show up here on the apps. Nine twenty four. So that smack dab right in the target there. So did it pick it up on the chronograph? It says chronograph disconnected, but it was nine two four. So at least we'll be able to get. Oh, it, okay, perfect. So it did show up here. I think we can do both. We'll do it like this. All right, we'll keep going. So that's shot number one and we'll keep going uh, all the way to 10. Can't go too fast. I think it's, you've got to make sure the chronograph is able to read. All right, we got the Mantis. The, the, the chronograph realized the latest shot that I had on it when I opened the app back up. However, none of the previous shots got synced up. So I'm gonna to have to do this test in a different way here. But anyway, I'll do some more shooting and then if you guys don't care about all of that, just go ahead and go towards the end there and you'll see all of the uh, summaries that I make for this. So anyway, the average um, muzzle rise was not too bad, 12.28 on that ammunition. It felt really good. That is my favorite so far, but I haven't tested all of them. So we're gonna go through it all of it and see what I really think. All right, here we go. I am recording the velocities anyway, so we might speed this test up. Muzzle rise on that one, 13.06, so slightly more. That was the Defender ammunition, by the way. Okay, next up is the Winchester Super Suppressed 147 grain FMJ. Those are some high 900, low 1000 FPSs. I did feel like that recoiled a little bit more. It was 
verified here on the Mantis, 14.26 on the average muzzle rise. All right, now we've got the Federal 147 grain ammunition here. We'll do our recoil analysis again. Looks like all of these are over a thousand FPS. So they do recoil more. I can feel it. All right, yeah, that definitely recoils more. The average muzzle rise there is 16.79 there. So we won't be using that in competition. The last test here is the Federal Syntec 150 grain, Syntec Action Pistol 150 grain, the official ammunition of USPSA. It's not too bad, 933. Felt less snappier than the one before. Now that looks pretty good. Wow, okay, I was not expecting that, but the average muzzle rise shows 11.26, but there's a couple that were really low. I don't know if you really consider those, but out of all those, uh, yeah, I don't know. Was my recoil really that low? Muzzle rise 1.63 on the fourth shot, 0.24 on the fifth shot, and 4.58 on the sixth shot. That could be skewing my numbers a little bit. So let's do three more shots and maybe take those out of the um, out of the equation just to kind of see if I need to get that data later for you. Because sometimes this Mantis could be a little finicky. So three more shots of the Federal Syntec 9mm. Okay, it counted my left, my 11th shot, good. Yep, then uh, the last muzzle rise was 25, but I think that's because I moved it up to put it over here. So we'll get rid of that one. I think in general, we're around 12.25 degrees, which is acceptable. It's like on the lowest end. And I think that one felt really good. So anyway. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the data from all of the information from the Mantis and the chronograph here. I'll explain that here next. So in the next slides, you'll see the full summary I put together. The ammo is in the order of my most favorite to least favorite, and my favorite of all is the Parabellum Research that I got from Green Country Ammo. It has the best feel when shooting it, very soft feeling shooting in the X5, and some consistent velocities, though not the most consistent. The average velocity, however, is the least, which is good for me, at 907 feet per second. The recoil is the lowest, which you'll see later. Overall, here you see the recoil data from the Mantis X10 and the velocity summaries. For the price, this is the best overall in my opinion. The Defender is my second choice. It also generally feels good in the hands when shooting out of the P320X5, but the velocities aren't the most consistent. But the average is also quite low at 923 feet per second. I'd be interested to see what their new competition line feels like. In general, I like it for the decent price and the low recoil as well. The third choice on my list is the Federal 150 grain Centec Ammo. I kind of think it's a little overrated, but it is good ammunition. You do get some consistent velocities, but not as good as the American Eagle version, which you'll see next, but the average is nearly identical as the Defender ammunition at 927 feet per second, and it's quite shockingly above advertised velocity for quote unquote quality ammo. The muzzle rise was quite decent, but I'm indifferent on this ammo. I'm sure if the velocity was more as advertised, it would feel better and I'd love it more. It's good, I'll shoot it, but I won't prefer it if I can buy more of the Parabellum Research ammo. The Federal American Eagle 147 grain ammo comes in fourth place for me. It has the best overall consistent velocities, however it is a bit high in over 1000 feet per second on average, which makes it a bit snappier for me if I'm trying to find the best off the shelf ammunition for steel challenge. The worst out of the bunch coming in at fifth place for me is the Winchester Super Suppressed 147 grain ammunition as far as how it felt in my hand. For the price I paid for this I would expect much better ammo. At first I already was quite disappointed at seeing the corrosion on the primers when I opened the box and the ammo was definitely not more than two months old since I bought it. The Defender and Parabellum ammo I bought was a lot older than two months. Even though the average velocity is near to the advertised, it has a big spread and even in the thousands of feet per second. 
Do you really want to go over 1,000 feet per second in a suppressor much? I don't know. I will pass on this ammo for competition though. So finally we reach the overall summary. The graphs show a comparison of the lowest to highest on the recoil and velocities. The data confirms my thoughts and suspicions, which you'll hear later in this video, directly after shooting them. So what do you think? Do you agree with my top picks, or do you have different experiences with these brands of ammo? So I'm coming to you guys from the future. I can't really see all of the data because I've compiled it all together, but just briefly looking at some of this stuff here, I can make a couple conclusions of what I really like. Um, by the way, the Winchester suppressed ammunition its advertised velocity was 990 feet per second. On average, I was getting over a thousand. This one says 1,004 feet per second. So, and I noticed that this did recoil a lot. So if you want to get this stuff for suppressors, kind of be weary about that. I don't know if it's as good as it's saying it is, but based on my tests, and I took 10, 20 shots already, I'll get all the data together and show you that, that you probably already saw before. But in general, this is shooting a lot faster than what it says it's going to. So maybe kind of stay away from that. And this is the ammunition where I'm noticing the rust on the primers. I've got plenty of other ammunition that I stored that, that's even older that hasn't been rusting like this Defender stuff. But all right, in general, after looking at all of this data, I think my top pick would be this Parabellum Research Green Country Ammo. It shoots quite softly from just knowing the feel and everything like that. And the price of it is very, very competitive and is very good. The other ones that I would choose then would be the Defender as my second place and then the Syntec as third. I know Fedo is a really good brand and everything, but it does shoot a little bit snappier than what I am used to with these other two. And they are more expensive, so it depends what you want. If you want the Syntec ammo for the benefits of having the polymer coated bullets, go ahead and get that. It's not a terrible choice. It'll work. It doesn't shoot with a lot of recoil, but you... Uh, do notice a little bit more, I think, with recall in the Syntec versus these other two. That wraps it up, guys, today. Thanks for watching. If you like this video or want to see more ammunition, which, by the way, I think I want to check out the Defender Competition series now, the actual one that they just came out with, and maybe we'll do a review on that whenever I get my hands on some of that. So if you have any comments or questions or feedback, just leave them in the comment section. Like and subscribe if you'd like. And if you don't like this video, go ahead and click that thumbs down button twice.